Hi, welcome to the 3D Pen Den. I have noticed the most asked question about 3D pens is what pen should I get? And if this is starting to look like another best pen review, it is not. This is what you need to know before you start watching all those 3D pen reviews. You need to know what questions to ask, what features to look for, it is hard to solve a problem before you know what it is. But if you are starting from scratch, this is helpful info. I wish somebody told me when I was starting out. Here is the material that goes into 3D pens as well as 3D printers. Filament. And since you will be buying these way more often than pens, let's start there. The two most common sizes of filaments are one and three quarters of a millimeter and what I think of as almost three, which is actually 2.85 millimeters. This is important because pens are designed to take either one or the other, not both. So this is the first decision you need to make, skinny or fat. Both come in big spools, usually of one kilogram. I find the pens that take the smaller size are more common, so you will have more options. Some pen manufacturers want you to use their proprietary filament only, or else they void your warranty. So. You have to be good for a year before you can do whatever you want. These straight sticks may be better for this pen, but they are also more expensive and less available than the spools. And the sticks are not really that much longer than the pen, so expect to have to reload quite often, which can break your workflow. The size decision is important because over time you will accumulate a lot of that size filament and you will not want to switch the filament size if you decide to get a newer or different pen. So choose your size wisely. Regardless of the size, the two most common types of filament are PLA and ABS. I personally prefer the PLA because it is supposedly more environmentally friendly and it is pretty odorless as opposed to the ABS that has this annoying plasticky smell when you work with it. The PLA melts at a lower temperature than ABS so make sure the pen you pick has the temperature setting for the plastic you intend to use. Some pens only do one or the other. There are other plastics out there with different properties and additives, so if you would like to experiment with those, check if their melting temperatures are compatible with the pen you pick. Most pens will tell you what is okay to put in them. Speaking of different plastics, there are also 3D pens made for kids, which use yet another low temperature melting proprietary plastic but be advised that none of these commonly available plastics will work in them. Now let's talk about pen features. What they are and why should you care? Some pens don't have any visible temperature control and that may mean they only work for one kind of plastic. Most pens will have at least two temperature settings, one for PLA in this case green, and one for ABS, in this case blue. However, even the same type of filament from different manufacturers may have slightly different temperature recommendations. I was always running this pen at 175 degrees as was recommended and it worked perfectly until I got filament from a different company and all of a sudden the pen started clogging all the time. I was wondering if the filament was somehow bad. 
All it took was raising the temperature 10 degrees and all was well again. So that is where this display feature comes in handy. When the pen is sitting, it will ooze the plastic a little, which is normal. When it oozes a lot, you may need to lower the temperature. And if it starts clogging, try raising it a little and that alone may fix it. Next, you definitely want some kind of speed control. Some pens have a continuous speed slide control that allows you to get the speed just the way you need it for that specific task. Some pens have just two or more speed settings which may or may not be sufficiently different from each other. But do not get anything without any speed control at all. Because sometimes you want to work as fast as possible, like if you are filling in a large area. And sometimes you need as much control as possible if you are doing something delicate, such as bridging. By the way, this bit is in real time. This is the actual time it takes. Keep in mind most of the 3D pen demos online, including mine, are sped up a lot. Going slowly and deliberately is helpful in situations when you need to start and land on very precise points. You don't want to be rushed by your pen's speed settings. You have enough to worry about right here. Pens dispense the plastic either by holding the forward button and then stop dispensing when you release it. Or some pens have a continuous action where you double click to start and then the pen just draws by itself until you stop it with a single click. And some do both, which is really helpful. Because when you are doing a long job like wind fill, for example, you want the pen to just keep going and going without having to hold the button till your fingers cramp. And on the other hand, on the jobs you really want just one small drop of plastic and no more, it is more precise to just tap the button and let go when the drop looks big enough. Retraction is a feature where the pen automatically pulls the plastic back in a little bit when the pen stops. It is there to prevent these annoying hair-like tails trailing from your work every time you stop that you have to remove later. As you can see here, even though all my pens do have retraction of some kind, it looks like it didn't work so well. That is because you have to help this feature along with your own penmanship technique. And sometimes in the heat of the battle you forget your good manners. And frankly you always get a bit of this retraction or not. The trick is to listen to the sound of your pen and wait till you can hear the retraction sound stop plus maybe a second beyond, and then yank the pen off the line a little bit. If you are impatient, the plastic will trail behind like a glue residue from a glue gun. So you definitely want a pen to have a retraction, and I think most of them do these days. Some pens come with special features. This one came with an attachment that was originally advertised as a soldering tool, but it doubles up as a smoothing tool for post-processing, which we will talk about in a minute. It also has an optional battery pack if you need to draw on the go. Other pens have different size nozzles. And this bit is their smoothing tool, which is a bit of an afterthought if you ask me, but I guess even an afterthought counts. 
my personal preference is a separate smoothing tool because frankly oftentimes you need to use the smoother and a pen side by side and it's just too cumbersome to keep switching attachments all the time. Also with a separate tool you get more temperature control and bigger selection of tips for it. Which brings me to the related topic of post-processing your 3D pen projects. Working with the pen alone will produce various distinctly coarse textures, which can of course be an intentional part of the design. However, if you want other types of finishes on your project, there are ways to achieve them with a variety of post-processing heat tools. For smoothing three-dimensional sculpture, you will need a wood burning tool. More on that is in my video called Smoothing Without Burns, which is in the description. For flat parts, you can bake your pieces, for instance, smoothing. And I do have several baking videos out that are also in the description. And I do have to admit that yes, sometimes you just have to sand. It is not my favorite activity, but it is the best way to get a straight edge, for example. So, though obviously not everything needs to be smooth and glossy, you can have just about any finished look you desire with the right kind of post-processing. But that would be another video. So until then, watch some more reviews and get a pen.